got to clean up from one job before we start the next. All right, we have a tear apart and a build of one particular club company, but not for the same guy. So let's talk about what we're going to do next. <laughs> Welcome back to the golf shop, Jim McCleary, and we are in the working area, not necessarily the fitting room, and for good reason. We are working on a set of PXGs, All right? A driver and an iron, well, the driver fairway wood and the irons. And the, the cool part about this is two different models, two different golfers, but the overall theme is we're putting in green label chaffs. <laughs> That's what I try to do it. So Mr. McGough says, hey, why don't you do a video? And I said, okay, but it's PXG. Yeah, she says, so it's PXG. So what, They people need to know about the PXG. Okay, and all the labels are green. You can show them how to take them apart. Okay, so not faulting the logic, we're putting together the clubs. <laughs> so, so what are we doing? We are doing the PXG 0811X. This is the 0811X. Now you'll notice that it has, has uh, the weight on the bottom, on the back, on the toe, and in the middle. I knew there was four. There we go, and there's four. So if you had all this weight kit, you could really tweak on how you would want that golfer to turn over the club, obviously. So a little higher, a little draw bias, a little toe bias, a little less or more spin, that kind of stuff. And then you have the adjustability, and the cool part about this is it's a metal ferrule, so we're gonna talk about that. And it has the Aldola NV of the new style, but we're, not, we're taking that out. We are putting in the Acra FX Green. It's the FX 3.0. It's the M4 Flex, which means it's stiff. The green is now a new color uh, for them. It used to be yellow for the top, uh, red for the middle, and blue for the high launch. Blue is still the high launch. Green is now the middle of the road, and the red is now the, the, lower, the lower launching club. The cool part, the, the, the graphics on this guy are just incredibly cool. The paint in the green is just, it, it's just really nice. It stands out well. And then if you're not a big label person, then they've given you the shadow, what I call the shadow label. And, and so we're going to put this one shadow label up because he doesn't want to see the green. And, uh, so we, and the other part about this is Acra makes the driver shaft and fairway wood shafts to go with that. You don't see that a lot in very many shaft manufacturers, in fact, hardly any. And that's what makes this so good for this golfer because we knew we know that the driver is going to work and he really likes hitting fairway woods, so we know that these fairways are going to work because they're dynamically matched, not just statically, let's add a couple of grams and be done. The profile actually changes to match holding these smaller, heavier heads. Okay, so let's get the irons. Okay, the iron is the 0311P, 0311P, and you can see this one is the club that has, oh, let's see, in the iron you're not going to see too much, let's talk about a taller iron. All right, if we look at this, it has what I would call a medium high offset, and we're going to call it a progressive offset, means that it gets less as it gets down to the bottom of the set. Now, it has a wider sole, but that is, that's always been PXG's motive, right? They've just a little slightly wider sole. Back end's been tailor cut off a little bit. Leading edge has been uh, killed. And it's a hollow body club. And they fill it full of what I would call iguana spit. <laughs> and, but it is, there is a gel that's in there to help give it that softer feel. Uh, it most likely is to protect the thinner face that's on here. But that's for them to figure out has the Elevate Tour S's in it. The Elevate Tour S's are in that 110, 120 category. I'm gonna guess more closer to the 110 than the 120, but uh, that's it. So this golfer really likes, uh, needs a lighter shaft, 
a little more flexible. So we've made some stuff before this golfer before, and now we are going into a different type of shaft, and it is another green, and is the Nippon uh, NS Pro 950 Neo, the 950 Neo. All right, and it is in an R flex in this particular case. Now, why why is the Nippon so? What's the deal with the Nippon? Well. Nippon got started with their lightweight shaft. That's how they entered the market. Now, they're really, really good with the Modus, which is the heavier stuff that you see on the Tour, uh, nicer shafts. They have a really good feel. They have a different type of ball flight than what you would normally see in most categories, and it's gaining a lot of traction. They've come out with a Neo to update their lightweight shaft category, and what's, what they've been seeing is 95 is a real popular weight, but the original 950 was really like that. So what did they do? You know, it has a softer butt section which makes the club all come around and a lot of people like that. Maybe a tad higher in the flight. The original one, it was all soft. So what did they do? They beefed up the midsection, they beefed up the tip section in order for it to feel a little bit more, oh, we'll call it more boardy. And, and to say that's kind of a misnomer. What it means is, when you go to swing this thing, normally in the 950s, they all feel, not necessarily the 950s, but 95 gram shafts, tend to feel a little flighty. This thing's pretty solid. Now, what do they say when they do that? If it's that solid and it's solid at the butt, that it tends to hold the club open, you might get a little bit, a uh, little higher ball flight. That's what the idea is. I've hit these before. Now, for me, being the type of golfer I am, I like the feel, but it didn't create a higher ball flight. I'm already a higher ball flight guy. I thought it, it created a really nice ball flight. So those types of descriptions are individual for each person. So keep that in mind. So what are we doing here? We're gonna take them apart, we're gonna put them back together. If you're really, really looking for some tips and tricks on it, I have a club making series and you just put it up in there, go check it out and we'll show you that. But I wanna show you the particulars about PXG, right? There's certain particulars that you need to know about these guys if you're going to be doing this kind of work. Now, speaking of this kind of work, if you're doing this kind of stuff, hobbyists want to get out there and you don't want to get any, any dirt on you, you might want to check out one of our aprons. If you send us an email at mcgolfshop at roadrunner.com, Mrs. McGolf can send you a quote of what it would take you to get you one. We even have them the large or extra large. Three pockets in the front, uh, adjustable top, long ties in the back. I use it for barbecuing too, <laughs> so you can try that. Also, if you're interested, we do have uh, the club glove tour towels that just hang straight on top of a club head. They don't have any hooks. It is a microfiber, very aggressive towel. Comes with a little bitty logo, different colors, and if you're interested, the same, same email address. Alrighty, so let's get to taking these things apart. For taking apart the iron, it's pretty much just the same as every one. However, I have run into issues, and we're going to talk about that here in a second. Of course, the butane torch. About a minute with the heat. Ooh, a little bit more. There we go, a little bit more heat. Pull it out. Okay, there's some extra goo at the bottom, so we're gonna use a drill. One more clean out. All right, so here's, what, here's a couple of things. Number one is that this is a club head that has all these little torque weights. And the torque weights are for swing weighting and to be able to help you control how the, the, the golfer will turn over the club. So if you really wanted to hold them open, these would be lighter, these would be heavier, and vice versa. If you wanted to hit it up more in the air, you'd put a whole bunch more here. That's what you're doing. All right, the other part is, if you can see in there, 
There we go. It's got a really deep, really deep hosled shoulder. And when they have that, they call those centering ferrules is what you need. Not necessarily a collared ferrule, but a centering ferrule. And so we have to buy special ones, and we're going to talk about that when we go to put it together. So we've got this one taken apart. <laughs> so I'm going to take apart all the other ones, and then we'll, we'll talk about taking apart the, uh, the iron. Okay. Okay, so we got all of them done, two, four, six of them. And it took me a grand total of eight minutes. Not too bad. They're all cleaned out, all drilled out, ready to go for the new shaft. These are going to be a taper tip variety or they come in discrete lengths. So we're not going to do too much in the way of frequency matching. But they'll be really, really close because I've checked them. Now, we're going to take off the tip. All right, we're going to take off the tip of the uh, PXG. Now, in, in other... In most scenarios, you're going to find that there is a ferrule. The ferrule is typically plastic. The plastic is going to melt when you get it hot, so you can pull it off. In this particular case, it is not, okay? It is not plastic. It is metal, which makes this thing awesome. So what we're going to do is heat this up, put it in the puller, and just pull it out. So let's get that going. Okay, so we've got it heating up. I've got it set in there, and we just want to... Get it pulling. Now it comes. Now you know it's going to be hot. That's where you want to use some gloves. And there you go. Now we got to get that out of it. Can we see that part? There we go. There's some extra glue in there. That's what's making that little circular thing. But we're going to put this back in the driver and then be done with it. Uh, how these work is they have little flats on them. And these little flats marry up into those little flats. And so you have to look, because it says one high, right? One high, and then it'll have standard, and then uh, one and a half lower. And we want this standard. So in there it says just like that. All right, so now we've got it tightened in there. We still got to get rid of that thing. We get rid of that thing with a drill. All right, now, Took a little bit of drill bit. We took a little bit of um, the a wire brush on another drill and cleaned it out. And there you go. You see how it's a little silver on the inside there? With a little bit of a black trim, that means you've got it because these are black on the inside. Around the top end. Inside, it's a good silver. So if you can get it to where it's looking like that, you know you're doing okay. So now i got to go pull two more heads. So why do I undo the head when you say, Jim, you're just going to put the head back on. Why am I undoing the head? Well, basically, it's transferring heat. I don't want to have to heat this up in order just to get to that. So we're just going to heat this up. So let's talk about this guy. I know it's heat. i got to get it on here. But if you look at it, the thing is it's on an elliptical meaning that it's, not, it's tilted that way or that way as you, as you spin it around. And these flats coincide to, a, to the way that it would orient itself into the head in order to give you a, lo a loft angle. Now because it's an elliptical, as you do the loft angle, the lie angle will also change because you can't have one without the other. All right, so we match them up back again. We just pulled it out that fast. And screw it back in. Okay, that with the with the use of a really good puller, again, three minutes tops, and we now have that inside taken care of, and now we're on to the next one. And I mistakenly told you it was a three and a five. It's actually a hybrid. All right, look at all those weights on that hybrid. One in the middle for swing weight. That's open bias, draw bias, that kind of stuff, and you can adjust the loft. This is the 317X. Now this guy's a little different, as you're going to see that not all the adapters are created equal. This guy's a little shorter, a little stubbier, a little rounder. So you want to keep that in mind. You, they're not all the same. Now these are normally made out of aluminum, so you don't need to give them like a minute's worth of heat. Otherwise, you'll start boiling the outer coating off of it. And that's the reason why we're doing it like that. So about 30 to 40 seconds, and you should be good. Okay, let's talk about the Proto. Uh, the hybrid. The hybrid says it's a proto. So it's a little thinner top line, uh, 317X. 
370 hosel. Again, it's metal. We've got it set back to the standard, but it's a 22 degree. And the 22 degree means it's probably about a four, which means we are going to have to trim some of the shaft in order for it to perform properly. But not a lot, right? Not a lot. So now the thing is with the with the driver and the fairway and the hybrid, he doesn't he just wants logo up, so we don't have to worry about too much about that. We're gonna get those installed. The other ones, uh, the irons, uh, we're gonna we're gonna put logo down on those as well and make those go in there and we should be good to go. So we're going to put those together. Now there's uh, one uh, two trips I want to show you, so we're going to go over here and I'm going to show you that. All right, the first tip is that we've got to we got to deal with this metal ferrule, and because normally what happens is you get in here, you measure the depth of the hosel, you sand to that part of it, and you put the ferrule on there, and that gives you the decorative stuff or the decorative appearance. However, when you have a metal, you can't go any further than that. So you, I just basically take my thumb, and you see how much I've got at least I got at least an inch. And that's where it goes, and so we're we're pretty good. I could take a little bit more, but that's as far as I really, really want to go with it because I am to the bottom. So we're going to do that. All right. So the the irons are a little more particular in that. Remember we talked about the calling a centering ferrule, and the centering ferrule means that it has a lot more shoulder on it. See that? A lot more shoulder. And what that does is it goes into that particular part and it sits in there and it centers the shaft into the hosel. Okay, so that's one thing I thought was really kind of neat. It's a little bit longer and it very much like the pings. However, what it also has, I got to finish, give me a second here. Now you can get these at Golfworks. So go look up Golfworks PXG if you're going to be doing these. But it comes with a little metal sleeve. And what's that for? It just goes right on there. There you go. So what happens? You slide this guy over top, right? You slide this over top, then you put this guy on, which I can take right back off. So you slide this guy down, then you put this guy on. There you go. And then you force that down in there, that's what gives it a really tight seat. You're going to have to really jam it down in there and that's going to give you a tight seat and that's what you're looking for. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to spine and flow these guys and then we're going to assemble them. So, uh, and that's another one if you want to see some more about putting a golf club together, it'll be up in here and then we'll take a, and we'll come back and we'll see how we do. <laughs>
we finished the, the build of both the PXG irons, which are the 310P second generation fours, and then a series of the PXGs in the, there's a 317, a 318, and then a, the X, 8X11 in, uh, in, in the driver, all protos, okay? So what did we, you know, re recapping on what we did. I, I exchanged the shafts because the shafts in the irons were just too much for the golfer whose name is Cal. And, and so we talked about it. We had made another set and he kind of told me what, we were, what he was experiencing with the other set. And we landed with the, the Nippon uh, 950 Neos. It's going to feel a little less whippy than what he had before. And it's going to feel just ever so slightly heavier than what he had before. And I think he's going to like it. Now, the cool part that he, he uh, did was that he got with the green and then has the green align on the grip on Greg. Uh, as we went through all the PXG and I cleaned them up and gave them a little wax, uh, we went with the Acra FX 3.0 and we put the shadow label up forward and we we're using the Win 2.0s, the new firmer ones. They got a new pattern, pretty nice looking. And those turned out good. As you can see right now, what we're doing is putting on the grips of the clubs. We've already put the tape on. And again, this is not a typical instruction video for the whole entire thing because there are build videos uh, within the library at the McGolf channel. What I was showing you is the things that, the, that are special for the PXG. One with that centering ferrule for the irons and a little cap that they give you, which was new to me in order to put it in there. And what that does is that it's kind of a vibration dampener all on its own. And then the idea of the types of shafts that can work for different types of golfers. That's where we're at with that. Now, he did a very, very good job in the irons and matching the green logo with the green uh, align that comes with the grips. Now, on the, on the driver fairway hybrid, a uh, different animal altogether. I did a fitting with the gentleman, Greg, and very he's he just got back from some surgery and feels better. And now the swing feels almost foreign because he's you know you're normally swing with that pain or protect that part that's injured, and now he doesn't have to. And he's got to get out of some of the bad habits that he created when he did that. Now that we've seen all those, you know, it, so what really happened, what did I think? The uh, irons are very soft. They look pretty good. I think they're going to be really good for Cal in the way that we made them and we bent them two degrees flat for him per the spec. I think, and they all came out swing weights just like that. Very, very well done. I did have to wait a couple because they were off just a hair, but that's part of building. On the woods, Again, very consistent swing weights where they're at. I had I made the driver a half inch long, so it's going to be slightly heavier than normal. But the rest of them we left standard because of the way that the clubs work. And, it, and but the swing weights, the frequencies, and everything with the acro shafts came in just fine. The lofts and lies are true to form. Everything is doing very very well, and they do look pretty good. So hopefully we learned a little bit about PXG in the irons and in the woods. So Bob Parsons, if you're out there listening, brother, you want to stop on by and we can talk PXG stuff. I got, I got a steak I can put on the grill and we can sit out and just talk about golf and old uh, military stuff. <laughs> so as usual, guys, hopefully you liked it. And always, let's see your scores go low.